I bow to all the seekers of spirit. The seeking of spirit has been described by so many people from ancient time. It is nothing new that I am telling you that a human awareness reaches a point where it starts seeing that there has to be something beyond. And at that time the seeking starts and a person starts looking forward to something that will make that person the spirit. As all the scriptures have described and talked about it, there is no amount of talking is going to improve on that because spirit is within us, it resides within us in our heart. Now, as it is, you must have heard many people talking about it, that you have to be spirit, that you have to get your Self-realization, you have to have Self-knowledge, you have to know yourself. But in Sahaja Yoga today, what one has to do is to establish that, to actualize that, to make it an experience of your own. And this is a very big gift, I think a very unique discovery that has come to us that we can actualize. Now we have to understand one simple thing, that when the Spirit manifests within us, what should happen on the very gross level, what should happen? Firstly, it must be invigorating, means you must get more energy in the body, you must feel physically better. By going to any uh, process or any method or any experience, if health-wise, if you cannot improve, then must know that it is not the spirit, because spirit is complete health or it never gets sick. That is what spirit is. So first thing that should happen to you is that it should be an invigorating life, a very dynamic life. The second thing that should happen to you is that you become a very peaceful and a relaxed personality, not like the ones who were agitated and were angry and shouting. There is nothing to shout and get angry. It's a kind of a fear these people have perhaps that if the truth they face or if the reality that comes, they will have no place in this world. That might be one of the reasons which makes them agitated. A person like Christ, about whom people talk and think that they, they, Christ was they, is in their pocket, must know that first and foremost thing, the greatness of Christ was that he used a weapon of forgiveness. He was such a peaceful person and the cross also that he said that forgive those who are doing this, O Father, because they do not know what they are doing. That kind of a personality you can say is a spiritual personality and not a person who gets agitated and hot-tempered and starts shouting at people. The time today is extremely precarious which we do not realize. For example, if you ask these people, if Christ comes and stands here, how will they recognize Christ? Is there any way of recognizing Christ? They might be the ones who crucified Christ one because they did not recognize at that time. How will they recognize Christ? Is a very simple question which we never try to answer. There's no way to understand how we are going to recognize Christ. A very, very simple question has no answer because you cannot. You cannot recognize it because your awareness cannot make you understand. Like somebody told me that there's somebody who claims that he's Christ. I said, all right, ask him to walk on the water. <laughs> if he can walk on the water, then think that he's Christ. That's one of the qualities of Christ. Now, whatever is the quality of a particular advent is to be seen in that advent. Every advent has a particular quality which is being already described in the ancient books. You should not accept anybody because he says, I am this and I am that. This is the problem with us that we get ourselves wedded to some sort of a mental conception, live with it. Our forefathers live with it, their forefathers have lived with it and ultimately we find there is nothing left. So one has to know that when you, at least when you say that, uh, you believe in Christ, how will you recognize if Christ comes in? Is there any method? Is there any sure method 
that will tell you that he is Christ. The rays. If you become the spirit, you have vibrations. You feel the cool breeze. You have a new awareness, a vibratory awareness. The fifth dimension within you rises into that point by which when you ask, is this Christ? The vibrations will flow tremendously. You will know this is Christ. If he is a fake person, you might even get blisters in your back. You might even get terrible heat from such a person. But if it is Christ, you will get tremendous breeze in your hand. This is the sign how to make out whether he is Christ or not. That's why he said that you will be calling me Christ, Christ, I won't recognize you, neither you will recognize him. That's a fact. You live with an idea, with a mental projection and then you kill all your possibilities, chances of your ascent. You must keep yourself open like a scientist does. Keep yourself open. Your mind should be open. You should not close down by any dogma or any kind of such theory that makes you completely excluded from the rest of the thing or which makes you non-reflective, which makes you a person who cannot reflect, cannot think anymore about it. Such a personality, if you develop, it is going to be very, very dangerous for you. So the personality should be open, should be receptive to understand. Now, as I told you yesterday, that it is a spontaneous happening, it is the happening of the living process with it is nothing to do with artificial things. Of course, when the churches were established, they tried to do good to people in the sense they told them that you be in the balance, you keep to the balance and all that. But it went too far with certain things like baptism, I think, that where they, everybody started putting their hands on top of uh, anyone and said that you are baptized. That's not proper, what we call anadhikar chishta, means it is unauthorized. To baptize someone is not the authority uh, that you can get from any school, colleges, but you have to get it from God. If you are a realized soul, then you can baptize others. Everybody cannot baptize everyone. Even I don't think Christ's disciples baptized anyone. They did not. It is later on, I don't know how it crawled into the organization that you could ask somebody to go and baptize someone. William Blake has clearly said that the priest cursed me on my head and I cried and wept. Actually, that person who has to baptize has to be a realized soul because baptism means awakening of the Kundalini and breaking up this spontaneous bone area open to the subtle. And that you cannot do it, so you better not do it. You are unauthorized. In all humbleness and a humility, one must understand that that is not your job. Say, for example, I do not know anything about the machinery or about the car, I start driving, what will happen? That same thing happens with people who do not have the authority to do God's work, start doing God's work, they land everyone into difficulties and ultimately they neutralize themselves. It is high time for all of them now to see that what they have to do through all these institutions is no dogma, nothing like that, but what you have to do is to transform people through their Kundalini awakening, through their real baptism. This is what people have realized, that there's something wrong somewhere that we are not connected to the base. When it happens, the first thing that happens to you that you become collectively conscious as uh, Warren has told you. This collectively consciousness is nothing but that your attention itself, your attention which is felt on the central nervous system gets any light. In the sense that as like ether, when you touch ether, you can communicate anything from here to every place. In the same way, when you touch that all-pervading power, you can communicate through that power anywhere sitting down here. 
it is collectively conscious. Moreover, collectively conscious means that you can feel a person, whether he is the person, he is all right or he has a problem or his, his, his uh, Kundalini is in this part of the body or uh, if he has got some disease, you can feel also about yourself. That's the sign of light, that you automatically feel how the person is. You may not out of courtesy in your breathing say it loudly or you may not try to inform the person. The other day one lady came to me and she was, uh, she was having cancer, no doubt. But I didn't tell her. I tried and I think now she's cured. So you don't have to tell the person because you don't have to achieve anything by telling. What you have to do is to achieve if she can be all right, if you can give them realization. But your attitude is not to cure people. That's not the attitude of the divine because it has got common sense. If you know that a certain car is going to be a junk forever, it is of no use. You don't repair such cars. So despite the affection and compassion you have for everyone, you want to see that by giving realization to this man who is uh, absolutely good for nothing and all that, you are just going to throw pearls before him. So you don't even want to talk to such a man about realization. Leave alone giving realization. It is such a headache to give realization to a man who is absolutely against God. Like Hitler, for example, if he says that, Mother, give me realization, what should I do? It is just like that. So you have to have basically a temperament of seeking. If you are a seeker, then you get your realization and you become collectively conscious. With collective consciousness, you can also raise the kundalini of people. You can cure people. You can mentally improve them. You can settle them with peace. Then, sitting down here, you can tell about everyone what's wrong with that person and sitting down here, you can try to help them. It is not a difficult thing at all because you become that. Like you have seen a television, if it puts to the main, mains, it starts acting in such a fantastic manner that nobody can believe that this little box can behave like this. In the same way, this little box starts behaving in that fantastic manner. This should happen to you, otherwise you should not believe that you have got realization. It is not a make-believe thing. It is not just a mental understanding that you are twice born. It is none of the things. It is something that has sprouted within you which has to be. If you are lovers of truth and if you really respect yourself as people seeking the truth and nothing else, it happens to you and you grow completely in your glory. Secondly, what happens to you is that you start understanding that it is the truth. How? Because supposing uh, there was, as I told you, that there was a gentleman whose father was sick and he did not know about it, he wanted to know about his father. So I said, all right, you put your hands and ask, what, how is your father? He just asked his father and he got a burning sensation on this finger here. So he asked me, I decoded it, I said, you, you, this finger relates to this portion and these are the centers of your father. If it is so, then you better ask your father, but I'm sure he must be down with very bad bronchitis. He telephoned to his mother in Scotland uh, because she came on the phone and she said, your father is down with very bad bronchitis. Sitting down there, he, I told him how you can cure him and after that, five, four or five hours he was out. It can be done. You are that fantastic. You are that glorious. So your attention becomes enlightened. There is no question of you uh, trying to put some spirits into things and doing all these useless things. Only thing what you have to do is to awaken the spirit in that person who is sick and the spirit takes over because it becomes also the truth. You start understanding that this is the truth because you verify it. Every moment you verify it. First you think it's a fluke. Sometimes you think by chance, you think, oh, maybe so. Like, later on you start seeing that it is true, it is so. You put ten children 
uh, if they are realized souls, and there are many these days, even in your country, we have seen lots of children who are born realized. If you tie up their eyes and put one person before them, and you ask them, what's the matter with this man? You tell us, what's the thing? They'll raise one finger, this finger, suppose. You ask him, did you have a heart attack? This shows the heart. Yes, I had. How do you know? I said, all of them are showing one finger, this is the heart. And then you start understanding that this is the truth. There is no argument, there is no other opinion about it, only one opinion because truth is absolute. Somebody says this is Christ, somebody says that is Christ, somebody says this is Krishna, that is Rama. It is never like that. It is one, the truth is one. You cannot have two opinions. And is absolutely your subject becomes enlightened and you can say, this is the truth. So the second thing that happens to you, that you start knowing the truth which is absolute. Now if you put your hands, say like this, now as you have become a computer, you are a computer which has started. Even all these instruments that have come are parallel to our evolution. Whatever is within us has come. But if you see a computer, it has to think, but without thinking, I mean, I look at you, I know you are there, I don't have to think about it. This kind of a computer, human beings will take thousands of years even to make that just thinks and spontaneously knows. We are already such a big computer, but we are even become absolute computers when we start asking a question, is there God? Now those who are atheists, if they ask a question, they start getting cool breeze in that. You ask any absolute question, was Christ the Son of God? Why should people accept Bible? Why should they accept anything? They accept this, because if you ask, you get the breeze, cool breeze in the hand as an answer. Then you know it as a truth. But could be people should know that how it is absolute. I'll tell you an example, like as we have some fanatics here, in India we also have lots of fanatics. And in Pune, I, they had arranged my program in a hall where uh, it was belonging to Brahmins. You see, they're another type of uh, twice-born people, self-certified. So they, they, they learned that I'm not a Brahmin. So they were very angry and they said, we can't have a program. Yet. And uh, our, they, these organizers did not tell me that, Mother, they don't want to have your program because you're not a Brahmin, nothing they told me. But they went and told that, all right, if you don't want to have, we'll publish it in the newspaper because Mataji is not a Brahmin, so they don't want to have her program there. Um, this was too much for them to take up upon themselves. So they said, no, 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 if you have published it in the newspaper, let's have the program. So I said, I started speaking and I just said spontaneously, I said, please come forward those who, are, who think they're real Brahmins. Four or five of them, you see, walked. Of course, I mean, in India, you don't find people of this kind normally. They don't challenge a saint normally. So they came forward and sat down, and their hands were shaking like this. You see. So I said, Now, if you are real Brahmins, why are you shaking? You should not shake before me. They said, Mother, we are shaking because you are Shakti, you are the power. That's why we are shaking. I said, No, nobody is shaking here. So they said, No, but these three, four are shaking, aren't they? I said, Go and ask them, Who are they? So they went and asked, who are you? They said, we are certified lunatics coming from lunatic asylum. Our doctor has brought us that because one of us was cured by Mataji, so we are here. So I said, see, there's no difference between those lunatics and you. Uh, you are shaking the same way and they are also shaking. So this fanaticism is making you shake. And this is the main point is that when you become the truth, you start understanding the absolute nature of truth. There is no another for truth. If this is so, this is so. If this is so, this is so. You cannot compromise, you cannot make it little different, you cannot synthesize it, you cannot analyze it. It is so, it is so, it is so. And you get confirmed about it. When you grow in your awareness, you start finding out that this is the truth. So you understand the truth through your mental activity first, through your rationality it goes into your logic and then you start accepting it. But the third thing that happens to you is the best of all. 
is the third thing that you see the whole world as one. You see the whole world as a big joke. You see the whole world as a witness. Like a thought rises within us and falls off, and another thought rises and falls off. When we are on the waves of the thought, we are frightened, we have fear, we have worries, we have jealousies and all those things. But supposing you got into the boat, then you start watching the waves with fun. In the same way, you jump onto such an awareness where you start watching the whole thing as a joke, as a fun, as a play. And the whole thing becomes a play to your mind, you start seeing. And then the joy starts pouring in. Like you all say that Mona Lisa painting is very beautiful. But how do you know? Why so great about Mona Lisa? She is not one of these modern uh, women. She is a very old-fashioned woman, uh, quite uh, plump. And why do you say that that painting is so beautiful? What so much about her? Now, if you are a realized soul, you can see it gives vibrations. It soothes your spirit. That's why it is the best. If you go to the Sistine Chapel of the uh, Vatican, what Michelangelo has done is nothing but he has created vibrations there, tremendous vibrations. And you see Christ, how they have shown Christ there. A robust, tall fellow standing there, throwing people here and there. This is what is happening today. This is the time of judgment. And the whole thing is nothing but the Kundalini they have shown, and at Agya Chakra, Christ is standing there and throwing people this side and that side. This is what it is, he is depicted there through his own understanding because he was a realized soul, he showed it very clearly. But there on the altar you find a lanky-panky uh, Christ, you see, absolutely like a TB patient about to die, only the bones, you see, covered with the, um, what you call, a skin. How can Christ be like that? It's sadism towards him. Let these people try once to carry the cross and they will know that he could not be like that. He could not be such a lanky bag. He is a person of joy, health, happiness and exuberance. How can be anyone who is a man of God, is sickly, agitated, hot-tempered and horrible-looking? He has to have that serene look on his face. He has to have that beautiful, soothing uh, impression on others. How can it be that a person who is such a great incarnation came on this earth to be a bony structure like that? This is what it is. We have such misconceptions about all of them, such misconceptions, and we want to put all this conception on God, but you cannot conceptualize God. The thing that stands between you and yourself is your ego and your condition. Both things stand against you. They are like barriers. When this Kundalini rises, as you see here, it's not here. When she rises and crosses over this center, they didn't bring the chart today. then what happens? Your ego and superego, which represents your conditioning, is sucked. When it is sucked in, that is the, that is the center of Christ. When he's awakened within you, he sucks it. That's the place where he is at the cross. Tomorrow, I think they'll bring the uh, chart and I'll be able to explain to you in more details. And that is the time when you are neither the ego nor the superego and you become the self, the joy starts ticking. The whole thing is joy. The joy starts coming in you. The, all other pursuits are joyless. There is no joy in the whole thing. And joy doesn't have duality like happiness or unhappiness. Happiness comes to you when your ego is pampered and unhappiness comes to you when your conditioning troubles you. But joy has no duality. It's just a feeling of complete elevated soul. You feel completely elevated above everything else, enjoying the bliss of Actually, if you see, I mean, Mona Lisa's painting even, you'll feel the joy is pouring just like torrential rain. The person who did it must have been the one who has felt that joy has brought it. But if there is a person who is always thinking and trying to think it out, 
what should be done then he doesn't get the joy at all you look at a thing and there is a thought in between it kills the joy completely supposing i'm here and i see something beautiful here and i start thinking about it then i start thinking how much it must have cost how to insure it what to do with it but if there is no thought the complete creation of that beauty flows inside you just like joy and this is what has to happen to you if you become the spirit if it does not happen to you don't believe in anyone also me you should not believe into anything unless and until you get to your spirit which manifest all these things it has nothing to do with your intellectualizing your your analysis or anything it is something that you have within yourself it's your own it is within you and you have to get it within yourself by your own achievements in the sense your own kundalini rises and touches here and opens it up now as i told you what i do is a simple thing that i enlighten and a light which is ready which is a, which is again in turn becomes enlightened and can enlighten another light now this dr warren who was here you have seen he came to me with his friend and he just telephoned to me had nothing he had just a telephone number and when he telephoned to me he came to me he got his realization and he must have given realization in thousands in the same way you can also give realization to people that's how we can spread the knowledge that is reality knowledge of god's laws of divine mechanism within us how it works it is not that everyone can get it i must say that i do not say that all of you will get it but should get it that's my desire is if you get it you are very fortunate you have found what you have been finding it and if you don't get it i would say that i'll try again it has to happen to you and that it should happen in a way that it becomes part and parcel of your central nervous system that you can maneuver it so i have to tell you one thing the one who has created us is anxious that you enter into his kingdom and enjoy the bliss of his throne may god bless you i would like you to ask me questions but not like the way yesterday it happened people said that mother don't ask them to ask questions because as soon as they you ask them to ask questions they start behaving like devils there is no need to be aggressive with me what is the need i have come here to give what is your own why should you be angry with me i just don't understand the psychology i have not come to take away anything from you i think they're outside sir they're not in here all right ask me questions please yes um you said that the truth was universal and and the same for everyone and i i know the idea that for an individual their reality is is strongly influenced by their belief of what reality is what did you say and and i he said just just a moment he said that as you have said truth is universal and that it is reality but everybody's concept of reality may be different yeah it is i know that it is true that the concept has to be different isn't not, it not has to be different because everybody has their own brain and to understand and see it through their brain but when you become the reality then there is no more concept it's reality itself because you start working through your consciousness through your central nervous system it is no more a concept it becomes the reality itself that's true that it has to be different naturally i understand that i don't mind having them different concepts but don't believe in your concepts because it has given no results it has shown no results so far that's all 
the concepts dissolve. Concepts dissolve, yes, that's what happens. Concepts dissolve when you see the reality. For example, supposing I have not seen this church and I, some people say they're seen a church. I may have some funny concept about this church, I've not seen it, all right? When I come in, I see it for myself and I know this is it, so I will have no concept, I will know what it is. It's like that. Simple, very, it's common sense. I tell you, it is real common sense. Actually, you'll be shocked how people live with concepts. Sometimes I'm really surprised how they have built up all their lives after lives on falsehood. It's really surprising. But they live because, you see, ego likes the myth. It wants to live with myth. Like Hitler believing that they are a superior race. Imagine, he killed millions and millions of people with that kind of a myth that he had in his head. Like Khomeini thinks he's the greatest religious man and that God is going to put him in his throne. It's true, you see. You see the effects of these concepts everywhere. The problem is the concept only. <laughs> That's the main problem why we are fighting. Now, well, see, let one by one, all right, please. Huh? Now, who are one this side, one this side. He's asked you to speak about the love and compassion of the Divine Mother and her qualities. <laughs> now this is embarrassing, isn't it? How can Mother talk about her love? You can judge it by the Mother Earth. Mother Earth has a capacity to nourish us. She has a capacity to soothe us. She has a capacity to sustain all that we do to her. How cruel we have been with her. First of all, we commit all kinds of sins, we do all kinds of wrong things on our back. Then we extract for our stupid ideas of having all kinds of things, we extract things from her. Still, she doesn't say anything. She doesn't bother about those things. But sometimes you go too far with her, then she punishes us. She does punish. Like you have earthquakes, you have many things like that. But she has a very special capacity, which in Sanskrit is described as the Tammara Pratyah, means by which she creates seasons to please us, to make us happy. The innocent creation of seasons that she has. You see the flowers, you see everything, how she makes the life so beautiful, humorous, so joyful. That thing is Pratyah, means the knowledge which is enlightened. When you get that, then you are amazed how kind she is, how she looks after you, little, little, and how she suits you. I'll give you one of my examples, how I try to console people in my own simple way. One day, there is a very big place, say, living in a mountain, who poor thing, his legs and hands were broken and all that, so he's disappeared. He lives in a cave somewhere in the mountain. And uh, he cannot move about, so he has a tiger, so he moves on a time. And I told people I must go and see him. He's my son. They said, Mother, you don't like all these gurus, why are you going to him? I said, He's not that dad, he's a real one. So they said, How are you believe? I said, You feel these vibrations? They said, Yes, not so far. Went to see this gentleman. Now he is a very evolved personality and he can control the rain. So when I was going up the hill, it started raining very heavy, and she got very angry with the rain. Naturally, he felt that what's happening, this rain is completely drenching my mother. She's coming up, I can't even control this rain, what will she think as it is, she has to come up to see, because he has broken legs and broken hands. And when I went there, he didn't talk to me, he was sitting on a little stone and he was just moving like this with anger. So I was just smiling and I went and sat. Then he came and he said, is it to control my ego you did all this, that you made this place rain like this when you are coming to my house, I can't even welcome you properly? I said, no, it's not so. Why are you angry? I know you have got a sari for me and I don't take a sari from a sannyasi because I am a girl, I am the one who is a household. Then how will I take a sari unless I think this sari gets drenched? The whole thing became such a sweet thing. <laughs> he 
you forgot all his temper, everything. How do you know Mother I have a sari for you? I said, I know you bought a sari for me, so I have to change it. And how did I change it? So the whole thing suited out. He was normal. But I said, you think of it. I am coming to you, and all the place must be drenched. It's the, it's the joy of loving. So why should you feel bad about it? And that is how he suited out. So the mother's love is such that she suits you, she knows your problems, she knows that you make mistakes. Like, like I'll tell you about Mr. Warren, one of his stories, many stories that he can tell you one after another. But one day I was in Singapore and we were going to Kuala Lumpur for the program. So I said, we'll go about six o'clock, it's all right, I have to see somebody, we'll all go together. Why are you in a hurry to go? They said, no, no, we must go make arrangements. And another lady who was organizing was even very much more worried. So they decided that we must go to the hall early. I said, all right, I'm going out to wait for me, I know. But they just thought, better go. So they took a plane a two hours earlier and went to the place of organizing. Now when I went there, I saw that when my car reached there, they, their car also reached and they were just getting down at that time. And I knew what had happened. So I said, all right, now drive on, otherwise they'd feel very embarrassed because they came with such a determination to reach up here and there, reaching at the same time when I have arrived. So I went I drove on. When I came back, uh, they said, Mother, we are sorry. I said, what happened? He said, we reached here and we all right. But from the airport to this place, there was such a bad jam we had never seen. So we thought we better drive through the side road. So we got stuck into the mud. Then we started <laughs> pulling the car out and all our clothes got dirty and we had a very bad time. And we arrived after you had arrived. I said, it's all right. So now, now we never do such a thing, mother. We should have come with you, it was a mistake. So like that, you see, little, little things mother teaches you how to be all right, how to be on right path. But it is never a big pinch, it's never a big punishment because you are children. So here it is love by which you should advance, you should go further, you should be encouraged. But if your ego gets pampered and you think, oh, I'm a great surgery, there are many who believe like that. And then they have little these correction points. That's how it works out. And gradually I find people come up very strictly understanding that we should not try to do things which are not all right. And we should try to do something that is helpful, which is very collective. And that's what it is. It works out in such a beautiful manner that you don't have to shout at anyone or to do anything. Whole thing works out in a beautiful way. But the blessings are so great, like Krishna has said, yoga kshema vaham yam. He says when yoga takes place, then kshema, that means the well-being of a person I am not. Even materially you are helped in so many ways. It's very surprising. It's not a You are helped materially in so many ways. There was a girl, little girl of 10 years, he wrote to me, Mother, I am dying to see you. How can I come to India? I have no money to travel. And she wrote a letter to me. I just read the letter. I never answered her. And eight days later, she had a fit in her school. So she, she took a trinket from her house just to sell it in the fake. So the teacher said, this is real gold. How can you sell this here? She couldn't believe it. She went to mother. She said, this trinket of our house has got real gold. She couldn't believe it either. So they went to the goldsmith and goldsmith said, yes, it is. It is gold. And he valued it. The price at which he wanted to buy it was exactly the same as they would have to pay for their traveling both of them. So it is in such a sweet manner. You see, you must know a loving mother, when you are asleep, she looks after you. When you are awake, she looks after you. But she doesn't show that uh, you are something else, more than others, better than others. She doesn't like you to have your ego, but she wants that you to share. Share your love with anyone. That's the greatest joy for me to see when these surgeries meet each other. When they go to India, you should see how they meet and they really, how they hold each other to themselves in such pure love and pure understanding. It's the greatest thing to see. I'm happy you asked such a nice question, but I feel rather embarrassed because it is really so great to enjoy your own love forever. May God bless you. It's been described by Adi Shankaracharya. 
ah, you must eat Adi Shankaracharya and know the love of God, uh, love of mother, I mean, he was a real child, a real beautiful child to describe. Even Christ of the God said, behold the mother, behold the mother. It's very significant. Have I answered your uh, questions here, this side? <coughs> this one, me. Two persons. Okay. Go ahead. Uh, yes. uh, I was quite interested in this Loudly, please. Loudly. She's referring to the, how will you, you said, how will you recognize Christ? You referred to that. So she raises the question, um, what is your idea, your theory, your concept of Christ? Will he be coming on a white horse? Will he be, yes. is he going to come? Is this going to happen? Is what? Yes, yes, all that's going to happen. I'm not going to serve the Lord, that's the fact. Yes. But that time is not going to give any negatives. He's not going to allow me to ask any questions. He's not going to give any answer. No realization, nothing. Just something about the last something about 15 years. He has got 11 powers of destruction. He's called as a culture. Once he arrives, you will have no place to hide your faces if you are not in it. It's time now that you join him just now, at this moment. Otherwise, there is no saying to him. It's a fact. Now, I don't want to fight him. Because that's how people are thriving by fighting others. I don't want to fight him, but it's a fact. That will be last of Already, it has worked. It has started working in us. All these incredible diseases are also a creation of the sea. According to Sanjoka, there are 11 historic powers. They are here, which we call as Ekarasha. <coughs> and when people get any of these diseases, all these centers go out of it. So, the destruction is now going to come from within, not from without so much. You need not be afraid of Russian bombing us, we are bombing ourselves. One more, this is the last. Yes. I'm sorry, I can't. Will you stand again and just say it again? Make it short. Make it very brief. <coughs> the idea of a and one soul greeting another soul. I think you have a, another concept about healing, but let's, let's analyze it. No, no. The, she's talking about one soul to another and the healing process, and is there any particular way in which we should do this? No, no, 
kështu të jaurë për të rëpërë të sësë 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 të rë
absorb it. You don't feel the pain on the contrary, you take the responsibility. Alright? Okay, let's have it. Alright, now, now how many more? Alright, now we have already here. Now let's have it. What is it? Um, I wonder, first, I have two questions actually. One, what is your feeling is the basic cause of disease? And For just one at a time. What is the basic cause of disease? It's imbalance. It's tomorrow I'm going to tell you all about it. It's imbalance. Second? Second one? So I was wondering, what are your feelings about Sai Baba? I'm now broken in people. If there is Shri Sai Baba, he is perfectly alright. He is the incarnation of the Prime Master. All the rest of them, I do not know. Now, who is there? Huh? Karma. No. Can you speak about karma? Oh, the karma is nothing, but action what you do, the byproduct of that is accumulated in your ego. And when the Kundalini rises, when she passes through this center, that is sucked. That's why he said that Christ forgives us our sins. He's taken over, he died for our sin. In the sense that the karma has sucked by it. And we are left without an ego, and it is only the ego that does the karma. Once the, the ego is sucked in, there is no karma at all. Can we say it or not? Create karma? Yes, we do. When we do action, you see, karma is only the myth that human beings have. Animals don't have. They don't have this problem. The trouble is, when the ego and super ego, both of them grow on our head, then we develop a personality, which is I. I am Mr. So, I am Mrs. The I is the When we develop the I, we think that we are me. This is a big figure. Like uh, I give a, an example of the villagers saying we tell them that you have, don't have to take too much luggage on an aeroplane. So they sat in the aeroplane and they put all the luggage on their heads and they said now we should lessen the weight of the aeroplane. It is something like that is our karma that we take the responsibility of doing the work. Why we don't know any work ourselves? If you see, what work we do? It's all dead. Now a tree is dead, so we make a heart. All right. Dead from the dead to the dead to the dead. That's all we do. We make a chair. We make this, we make that. And then we start using the matter for our comfort. And then matter sits on our head. We can't get rid of it. Our spirit is suppressed because of the matter. And then we have to use the matter, otherwise we just can't exist. So what we are doing is we are creating dead out of dead. But not a single living work we can do. We cannot transform one flower into fruit, can we? We cannot do it. So whatever is done, is done by God Almighty, by His living powers. Whatever we do is all dead, but we think we are doing, and that's why we create karma, which is the Everyone slip their shoes off so as to make a better contact with the earth. What is it? Is Put your hands up. It's all right. It's okay. They're recording. Be comfortable and sit with your hands on your lap. And when Sri Mataji asks, just close the eyes. Speaking every day is <laughs> All that you have to do at this stage is be hungry for it and to ask humbly for it in your heart. Please, Mother, 
give me my realization. Because you have to desire it. And that's where she cannot cross your freedom. If you don't want it, then, as she says, you're free to go. But if you want it, put your hands out and ask humbly in your heart, please, Mother, give me my realization. We have to humble ourselves down. Now, we have to just put our hands like this. Yesterday I told you, the day before, that the left hand represents our desire and the right hand our action. So we have to use the left hand for desiring. Put it in your lap like this, with your finger stretched, and sit comfortably. That's very important to sit comfortably so that there's no problem in your eyes. Shoes you can put back uh, under the chair and put your feet straight like this on the ground, not touching each other. Put the left hand on your back. And the right hand, I'll tell you how to use it. Just now you can put both the hands on your lap. And now close your eyes. Now don't open your eyes till I tell you. Because the Kundalini won't rise. It's not hypnotism. Something has to happen within. So just keep your eyes completely closed till I tell you. Now put your right hand on your heart, on the left hand side, and press it. Now you are the spirit, and the spirit resides in your heart. So you have to just ask the question three times. Mother, am I the spirit? Just ask, in a humble way, and with full confidence. Mother, Am I the spirit? Please don't feel guilty. That is one thing I would request you not to feel guilty at this moment. Forget the past. Just forget the past. Keeping the right hand, left hand as it is, bring the left hand down on your stomach, on the left hand side, to a center which is of the primordial mask. Right. right hand, sorry. Left hand towards me, left hand, sorry, I made a mistake. Put your left hand towards me. And right hand on your stomach. And press it hard. Press it hard on the left hand side of your stomach. Put the right hand on the left hand side of your stomach. At this point, you have to say with full confidence, Mother, I am my own God. Mother, I am my own Guru. Mother, I am my own Master. With full confidence. Try to sit comfortably. Now, this has to be said ten times because we have ten balances. Human beings have got ten balances. So we have to say ten times. Now, please put your right hand again to nourish on your heart. Here you now assert by saying, Mother, I am the spirit. Please say twelve times. You assert without feeling guilty, without feeling guilty, without feeling guilty, you must assert that, Mother, 
I am the spirit. Please don't feel guilty. Best thing would be to put your right hand on the base of your neck, on your shoulder, on the left hand side. Right hand. From front, yes. On the left hand side. Here, you hold it tight. From the front, you take your hand and become a tight. And hold it tight. Here you say, Mother, I am not guilty. Please say it 16 times. Please say it. It's too much. It's very bad. It's bad. Please say it with all your understanding that mother, I am not guilty. Now, put your right hand across your forehead. Across your forehead. At this point, you have to say, Mother, I forgive everyone. Please say, Mother, I forgive everyone. It's very easy to say, just say it and it will work out. Now, put your right hand on the back of your head. Hold it tight. If you know the optic lobe, where it is placed, on the back of your head. At this point, you have to now say, without feeling guilty, you have to say, that if I have done any mistakes, oh Lord, please forgive me. That's all. But don't feel guilty. Please don't feel guilty. Don't count them. Just say that please forgive me. From your heart. Now, put your hand on the top of your head. Put it just on top. Your hand, your palm should touch the continent bone area where you had a soft bone in your child. And press it and try to move it clockwise. Now, at this point, as I said, I cannot cross your freedom and you have to ask for your realization. Otherwise, I cannot force it. To just say seven times, Mother, I want my realization. Please give me realization. Seven times.
Now raise your hand and see if there's a cool breeze coming in. Now change your hands. Put your right hand down and the left hand on top of your head. And now see, raise your little hand from six inches high. Six inches high. Got most of you. All can raise both your hands on top of your head. Open your eyes. Raise them high, high up. And now ask the question in your heart: Is this the way of the Holy Ghost? Is this the Brahmacharya? Is this the all-pervading power of love of God that does all the living work? Now feel it yourself. Those who have come for the second time must have definitely felt it, but I'll tell you today what is to be done tonight and work it out and it'll be better than You might get a photograph from these people tonight. In the beginning, it's better to use my photograph because it has got vibrations. Now what you can do is to put a candle in front of the photograph and you can see the vibrations are coming from the photograph. Now put the left hand towards the photograph and right hand like this. Just now you can do it. Put the left hand towards me and the right hand like this. Now this is the balance. This is the balance we are doing. Put left hand towards me and right hand out like this at the back. You see, like this. So we are ventilating. All right. Now see on the left hand if it is coming. They are all thoughtless if you see that. Now, you put your right hand towards me and left hand towards me. Heart. You have to believe that you are the Spirit. That's all you have to believe. You have to believe in yourself. That's all I want you to believe in. That you are the Spirit. Good? All right. Then I'll teach you how to raise your kundalini tonight when you go home. So this is what you can do on the photograph and you can see that it starts flowing from both your hands. At the most, if you are very much sort of intention or anything, if you are very sick, then you can take a little bowl of water with little salt in it and put your feet in that bowl and take the vibrations from the photograph. But if you feel cool breeze in your hand and cool breeze moving in this hand, then everything is perfect. Now you have to learn. Tomorrow I'll tell you what it means, how to use it, how to become a master. It's a simple thing. Now today I'll teach you how to raise your own kundalini, which is your own. Now put your left hand in front of the kundalini, here. All of you sitting down. Can you see me? Put your left hand like this, just like this in front. Like this in front. This hand, like this. The right hand has to be moved up, front, down, back, like that, clockwise. You have to raise it. Now, let us raise our kundalini. Start it moving slowly, like this, like this, like this, and throw your hands up, absolutely loose, and then give it a twist. Throw your head back, and now give it a knot. That's what. We have to do it thrice. Again, let's do it. Hold the hand in front and start moving it. Take it up, throw your hand and just give it a twist. 
at here it is third time you have to give three twists you can do it at home throw back your hands uh, head and hands loose and give it one then the second one and then the third one like this now see it will improve now there's one thing more one must learn how to give protection to your aura that is very important protection to your aura i wish people knew how to do it they would have saved themselves in many troubles is to put your left hand like this and with the right hand you move it like this from here move it one go back two three four five six seven this is how you give protection to yourself now see your vibration <coughs> all right is better now what happens that when you are judging others vibration you can just start judging like this it's all right or give him a bondage like this this is the bondage of love because it is flowing through your hands when you move your hands actually the power is flowing through through your hands and fingers so what you are doing is maneuvering so you give it a banana like we have a good luck sign like that to him and then see the vibrations now if you want to see your own vibrations you give yourself a bandhan like this and then see your own vibration you try tonight don't talk too much about it don't talk you are beyond might and that's why don't argue about it the becoming is the most important part that's it is the difficult part of sahaja yoga it is not like no other thing that here unless and until you become it is of no use you have to become then you have to grow then you have to become the expert ultimately the master that's what it is and for which you cannot May God bless you. So that you can deepen still further. Tomorrow night's program is here. There's a weekend seminar. All this information you can get at the door as you go out. Please leave your address and telephone number. We'll contact you to let you know the follow-up meetings if you are unable to come to the seminar. So that you can deepen in this process. We'll see you tomorrow night. Good evening. <coughs> Those who want to meet Sri Mataji tomorrow evening, she'll spare a few minutes to meet you all. Tonight she's just come back from San Diego and is rather tired so tomorrow evening will be a good chance she'll spend some time with you. you all here after the program you think, would you like a cup of tea no uh, she's going to no okay. no let's let's Nine go oh, how are you looking fine thank you what's that sugar yes you're looking already all right excuse you're looking me for different I, I must tell you that feeling I... better uh, you must realize, you must do something. Acoustic is explicit. It's not a language barrier at all. It's an acoustic problem. Just say that for Just say that for you. It's shameful to miss what she said. Shameful. Well, we'll do something. Thank you very much. Okay. 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 Anybody going to the seminar at the weekend, would you be kind enough to just have a word with Brian Bell, who's standing here with his hand up? Because you may be able to help with transport arrangements for other people. 
It's a long way. Brian will deal with those people going to the seminar who may be able to help with transport. Yes. Ah, yes.